And open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. If you don't have a Bible, uh, we want to give you one, so raise your hand. And if you need it, if you don't have one of your own, please keep this. Again, we're going to be reading from Hebrews chapter 12 as we prepare to take the Lord's Supper together. At the beginning of Hebrews 12, the Christian life is helpfully likened to a foot race. We don't have time for a detailed exposition of the passage, so let me give you some contextual helps to have in mind as we read the passage together. This is a race that only Christians can or want to run in. It's not a sprint. It's much more like an endurance race. And both the track and the finish line of this race are marked by holiness. A life lived by faith bearing the fruit of holiness is what this life lived on this racetrack is to look like. Completing this race isn't optional for the Christian. The one saved by grace through faith must and will finish the race. And we're warned in verse 14 that without the holiness that this race is aiming at, nobody will see the Lord. Finally, weariness is a very real threat to us as we run this race of faith towards holiness. And most importantly, a means of avoiding this weariness is commanded in verse 3. Look for this command as we read. We're going to be reading Hebrews 12, 1 through 4. Read along with me. Hebrews 12, 1 through 4. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of, our, of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. This passage has proven itself so helpful to me. It has become one of the most precious in all of scripture to my soul. I have found myself so many times in the last few years and even a few times in the last couple weeks so overwhelmed with the threat of weariness that I wasn't sure I could go on. The path that I saw before me felt, it seemed overwhelming when I had my eyes on the path. And I know so many of you are facing some similar trials as your faith is tested in this race that our good Heavenly Father has marked out in front of you. I've spoken to some of you this week who are in that position. Let me commend this passage to you if you're in that position. I commend it to you if you're not because we will all sooner or later find ourselves with the threat, very real threat of weariness looming in front of us on this race. And the author of Hebrews helpfully inserts himself right in the middle of the passage as a fellow runner. Look at the we and us pronouns in verse 1 and 2. And I'm speaking to you as a fellow runner in this race, very aware of my need for the hope, endurance, discipline, and ultimately holiness offered here. Either you are in a trial now that threatens you with weariness in this race of faith towards holiness, or you will be soon. So every single one of us needs to understand this passage and more importantly, obey it. 
now and in all of life. So in verse 3, we're offered a solution to this threat of weariness. We are commanded to do something so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Look at your Bible. And in verse 3, look for the one imperative, the one command given in this whole section. Do you see it? Underline it. Put a box around it. And let's obey this command together. Consider him. That's the command. Consider Jesus. This word consider is used only here in the Bible, and it means to think deeply about with careful deliberation. We must not merely acknowledge Jesus or say, yeah, I know about him. I know that to be true, to have passing thoughts about him. We must deeply consider him and his perseverance unto death on our behalf as the means of sustaining us on this race of faith towards holiness through our daily trials, big and small. This is what we do each Sunday as we take the Lord's Supper. Isn't that a sweet provision of the Lord that weekly we corporately do together what we must constantly be doing individually? This is such a precious opportunity for us to recalibrate our focus to remember together the one that we must be individually considering throughout the week, moment by moment, day by day, for as long as we get to run this race. Look down at verse two. We fix our eyes on Jesus. He is the author and perfecter of our faith. The faith that we must persevere in is from him and it will be brought to completion by him. He is the one we must fix our eye, the eyes of our heart on now in the Lord's Supper and also in every moment of our life. You cannot have your eyes simultaneously fixed on Jesus and be distracted. This race of faith towards holiness is not a scenic walk, but a race of endurance in which your eyes must be fixed on only one thing, one person. Your feet must run in only one direction toward Jesus. This is just like the admonition of verse one where we're to lay aside every encumbrance, every sin that would would threaten our endurance as we run the race of faith that's before us. Charles Simeon helpfully comments, He says, we are not merely to look unto Jesus, but in so doing, to look off from everything else. We are apt to look at our own weakness and difficulties of our way, at the strength of number of those who are endeavoring to cast us down, or at anything that tends to discourage us. But we should look off from all these things and keep our eyes steadily fixed on Jesus. Verse 3 elaborates, we are to consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself. Most encouraging to our endurance is he who endured to the very end who could confidently declare from the cross as he died It is finished. We consider him who who endured to the very end for the joy of securing for himself a people holy and blameless. Jesus' death is the guarantee that we will be made holy. And considering him is the means of persevering as we are made holy through sanctification. Christian, the bread that you're going to hold in your hand, it's such a helpful, tangible, touchable, tasteable, physical reminder of Jesus and his endurance to death that we must consider and will keep you enduring. 
Isaiah 53, 10 through 11, Yahweh was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief as a result of the anguish of his soul. My servant will justify the many as he will bear their iniquities. Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that was set before him by his father, he endured to the very end on the cross and is now at the right hand of the throne of God. He finished his race set before him by the same good heavenly father who set this path before you, whatever it is. His race was harder than ours. Verse 4, you have, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. Consider him who did. He shed his blood, his perfect, sinless blood. We get to remember as we hold and taste the cup. He shed his perfect, sinless blood and endured to the very end to win the battle against our sin. As you take the juice, consider him who endured the sinless, the sinless in the place of us sinners and consider him and his endurance so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Grace Bible Church, whatever trial you're facing now, whatever trial you have come through or whatever awaits us tomorrow, individually, corporately, it has been set before us by our Heavenly Father. He doubtlessly has a million trillion good and sovereign purposes that we can't even begin to comprehend. But we know that at least he has one. He superintends these trials to train us for our good so that we may share his holiness, verse 10. A holiness without which none of us may see the Lord, verse 14. And verse 7 says, it is for discipline that you endure. God deals with you as sons. This discipline is not punishment. It's rather a training towards that righteousness towards which we have to endure. It's the testing of our faith spoken of in James 1 that actually produces endurance. This discipline is not and cannot be punishment or justice against our sins. No, Jesus drank that cup down to its dregs. He endured to the very end in payment for and in order to free us from the power of our sin. The discipline is to sanctify us, to train us, not to punish us. Remember that as you consider him. Trust your heavenly father's good purposes and endure. Lay aside every encumbrance and sin that so easily entangles. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. Consider him and let's run together with endurance. If you're not a Christian, I have to warn you, you're not even in this race. You're running away from God, not toward him. Your sins have not been paid for. Holiness is far out of reach. All you bring to God is your sin. And at the end of your life, you will face the Lord, not as your heavenly father, welcoming you and sustaining you across the finish line into his glorious presence. But you will face him as judge. And if you face him without Jesus' righteousness clothing you, you will be cast from his presence forever. And you will be punished rightfully for all of eternity. However, while you still have breath, this can all change. You can be made his own. You can be reconciled to him. You can be his child. And to your left, after the service, one of the pastors will be here to talk with you, to pray with you, so that you may be saved. But if you do not yet, if you have not yet put your faith in Jesus, please let the bread and juice pass when it comes. Men, serve us 
And Christian, when the bread and juice come, please take them on your own as you're prepared.